welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be talking about my least favourite books from 2018. My last video was my favourite books in 2018 and there were some really good ones in there. So I will leave a link to that one down below. And in today's video I don't actually have that many books to talk about. I have four books that I gave one star ratings to or didn't finish. And then there are another four books that... I finished and they weren't terrible but there were definitely elements to them that I didn't enjoy so we're gonna start off with those ones first. So first up we've got A Natural History of Dragons, a memoir by Lady Trent and this one is by Marie Brennan. If you guys watch my videos I am someone who absolutely loves books about dragons and the cover of this one is absolutely stunning. It is deckled pages and I really think aesthetically it is pleasing and this is an amazing looking dragon book. Now I've heard that for the rest of the series it actually does involve quite a few dragons but in the first one which is the one that I read, I was very, very disappointed because there was barely any dragons. And Lady Trent, although she was like kind of cool, she wasn't as interesting as I hoped she'd be, but I'm guessing that it's kind of more just setting it up for the rest of the series, but the first one doesn't make me want to read the rest of them. I actually don't remember if I finished reading this book or not. I don't think I did. Um, I don't remember what the ending of it was, but it's kind of sad. Like, it has these elements that I really would enjoy and I think that I just in my mind wanted so badly for there to just be a good dragon novel that I was let down by it. I can say if you guys are looking for a really good dragon book, you should take a look at Samantha Shannon's new one which is The Priory of the Orange Tree because you won't regret it. It's, it's amazing. Next up we have got Batman Nightwalker by Mary Lou. This is part of the DC Icon series where they have some big YA authors who are writing different kind of short stories from these characters and I've read a couple of them however with the Batman one I really think that they just pick the most boring character and aspects of Bruce Wayne and then chose to write a book about him and it really really sucked. And I honestly think this book would have been about 300 times better if it was actually just told from Madeline's perspective because she is so much cooler and evil and well-rounded than what Bruce Wayne was and he was just a flat-out boring character. Like I really like Mary Lou's writing, that's the only redeeming part to it, but this book was so boring. So the next book that I've got I've talked about a couple of times in videos and that is A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Maas. The only aspect of this book that I really liked was the fact that we got to see Feyre dealing with the aftermath and the after effects of the war that happened in the third book in the series. That was really cool, I really liked those chapters, but as for the rest of the book I really really didn't enjoy it. I thought this was a really really pointless story or novella or whatever it is. I think I would have rather have just waited like another year and had this included in the next book that she's going to write anyway. I think as a standalone book it wasn't really necessary or needed. Person who tops the crown for being the most annoying dingleberry of a character has to be Rysand. I can't stand the guy. This entire book is just him being horny and looking for Feyre so that they can boink. That's it. That's his entire story in this. There are just bigger problems to deal with than sleeping together. They just need to keep it in their pants and get everything back to normal. But they can't do that because Rysand just wants Feyre. I just get really annoyed at that book and I mean like I said there are elements to it which I enjoyed but I think I've just moved past wanting to read about it. The storylines are just predictable and there have been things in Sarah J Maas's books that I just don't like so I'm probably going to stop reading them especially after A Court of Frost and Starlight. So the fourth book that I've got for you guys is Girl of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nagan and this one really tore me in two because there are elements of this book that I think were amazing and that the author wrote really really well so it deals with a lot of violence and sexual abuse um, and it has two characters who are female that fall in love and she wrote those so wonderfully especially with the different um, sexual abuse that is involved in this. It was really hard to read and yet it was also very eye-opening. Um, I did think though that the first two thirds of this book were amazing and then the last third just completely dropped off and how the ending of this book went was really really disappointing to me. It was predictable, it was unrealistic and I think it kind of went against everything that you'd learned about the characters so far. I also think that the world building in this was a bit of a letdown because you get introduced to this range of characters and you want to know how they are like how they are and what happened to create the society how it was in this first place but you never get that background information. I think that when it comes to the next book in this series I will definitely have to like 
see how the reviews go on the next book because after how this book ended I really don't think I'll be reading the next one. It just really breaks my heart because I really want to love this book so much. It had all the elements that I would have absolutely loved and uh, I'm just so upset that I didn't meet all those expectations. So the next four books that I've got for you guys are four books that I gave one stars to or I didn't finish. So these are kind of like the ones that I passionately dislike. First up is Whisper by Lynette Noni. This one has shocked a few people because I really like Lynette Noni's other series which is the Modoran Chronicles and that one's a really fun fantasy series. So in this book you have Jane Doe. She has currently been residing in this prison-like thing for two years, six months, 14 days, 11 hours and 16 minutes. And during that time Jane Doe has never said a single word. Her days are always the same thing, she has the same routine, she also does physical training so she's quite a strong and athletic person as well and then one day her entire routine is mixed up when this tall handsome man comes into her world and she finally begins to speak. What absolutely frustrates me so much about this book is that Jane Doe is basically described to be one of the most powerful characters that you have ever seen in this kind of book setting. And I understand that if she doesn't want to use those powers, she doesn't have to, that's fine. But she is also someone who has been training physically for two years, six months, 14 days, 11 hours and 16 minutes. And I'm someone that goes to the gym maybe four times a week and I can tell you that I could definitely knock someone out with my guns. And Jane Doe has a rigorous routine that she does every single one of those days where she gains weight and she's strong. So, spoiler alert by the way guys, when she finds out that this man that she's attracted to, that she's basically fallen for, who lied to her the entire time they knew each other, has betrayed her, she just willingly lets it happen. She is furious, she's upset, but she doesn't use her powers, she doesn't use her strength, she just puts her hands out and tells them to lock those shackles on and they can do whatever the hell they want. Ah, why would you create such a powerful and amazing woman and then just make her a little bitch? That one just really frustrated me and I apologize for my language. Next book. I didn't finish this next one and that one is The Binding by Bridget Collins. It is a stunning book and as you guys may know by now, I buy books because they're pretty. And so I bought this one, it sounds so promising, I really wanted to enjoy it, and then I started reading it, and I felt like I had been lied to about the blurb. So in this book you have a young guy called Emmett, and Emmett is basically going into training to be a bookbinder. This means that he can make these handcrafted books with people's stories and he can erase things from their life. So for instance you have a woman in here who lost her baby and so she goes to a bookbinder and they write her story and remove all the memories of the baby so that she isn't so heartbroken and distraught anymore. And that's what Emma gets to do. But you never really get told what bookbinding is at all at any point during the first third of this book because that's how far I got into it and that's when I lost interest. Emmett is a boring character who has no depth the actual story time for this is shocking and instead of actually explaining things to the reader they just end paragraphs with this Emmett guy fainting all the time and that kind of got old real quick maybe around the fourth or fifth time that he fainted for no fucking reason but that's fine because then he finally gets to where he's gonna learn to be a bookbinder and I can put up with that like let's do this let's get to bookbinding it sounds so interesting I can forgive the terrible plot beforehand but then we get there and the bookbinding teacher doesn't teach him anything. We didn't get to learn anything about it. And then guess what happens? She fucking dies. And you still don't know what happened. Anyway, then Emmett goes to be taught by a different bookbinder who does everything very different and you can clearly tell is an asshole. And Emmett just goes with him and learns how to be a bookbinder and it was so boring that I then gave up. I gave this a shot on audiobook as well thinking that maybe I could do it and then it got to the point where I was literally rather reading the label ingredients on a bottle of bleach than listening to the story. That's when I thought that perhaps I should give up on the book. I've actually had a few reviews about this book which have come from trusted friends who have also said it is equally terrible but still if you guys have read the entire book please let me know down below what your thoughts of it were. The next one that I've got is The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. I won't talk about this one too much but it fell very flat for me. Uh, one of my friends actually recommended it to me. It is one of her favorite books and I can definitely see why it would be. There are elements in this that I would really enjoy but when I was going through the reviews one of the best things that I read about this was someone said this book is basically about Dracula who hoards a load of books 
who then wants to kidnap a librarian to just organise those books. And that is all that this book is, filled with just extra plot that isn't necessary. So I didn't finish it. So the last book that I have got for you guys is The Sunday Girl by Pip Drysdale. This one I probably passionately hate more than I do Whisper, and you guys can find out why. So this follows a girl, Taylor, whose ex-boyfriend has currently broken up with her. Her heart is broken, so she decides to go and have a one-night stand. And she has this one-night stand, and the man has a book called The Art of War on his table. So she decides to take that and read it and use the elements from The Art of War in getting revenge on her ex-boyfriend. She does some stupid things like goes to his house and like grabs things and moves things around then she like uses his work credit cards to buy a bunch of strippers and things like that and then he buys underwear for the next door neighbor so that it's all suspicious and ruins his home life so after Taylor's done this she still hates her life and everyone in it and then her ex-boyfriend knocks on her door and begs for her to take him back that he was wrong that he loves her that he wants to be with her and the idiot decides that that's fine so she welcomes them back in wide arms and they bang a shitload of times and she thinks that everything is fine and at this point in the book I thought hey this actually Actually might be a good story where the author is going to point out like sexual abuse and violence and like mental abuse and relationships and make it a really powerful book but she actually went in the opposite direction where the boyfriend then kind of admits that he knew she fucked him over and they start this like little battle between the two of them where Taylor is really stupid and makes these stupid choices because she's like skim read the art of war once and thinks she knows everything and then Angus who is the boyfriend like always shuts her down it's one step ahead of her and eventually until like she pushes him off her balcony and kills him and then Taylor leaves the country with another man that she's fallen in love with who is also an asshole. like she hasn't changed the type of guy that she's with so there's no like pro points from that but also she left the country and no one is suspicious that she might have killed her boyfriend and I just it, it was just such a frustrating read and I definitely recommend if you guys want to hate read a book this is the one for you this is such a negative video, so I highly recommend you go look at my favorite videos because this isn't me. I'm not someone who usually gets so angry and throws books around, but sometimes when the plots are just that bad, I can't help it. Thank you guys for watching my least favorite books from 2018. I know it was a bit of a roller coaster ride there, and I have no idea how I'm actually going to edit this video because I'm pretty sure I've just screamed and ranted this entire time. But thank you for sticking by, and hopefully I can make this look like some sort of coherent video. I will be back again soon with another video. Thank you for watching. Let me know your least favorite books down below, or if you really want to, you can go into my favorite books and absolutely slam them, because my intention is not to offend anyone, but just have a good old banter sesh. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!